Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to our second uh, wiki session uh, for the month of May. My name is Nellie Deutsch, and I'm going to be uh, walking you through some of the ideas that I have put together on attitudes to collaboration with wikis. So if you could just add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to add. Please feel free to use the chat box as we go. Just keep talking away. And it doesn't really matter what you talk about because some of us need to write as we listen. So feel free to uh, respond in the chat box, uh, either to yourself in response to what I say or uh, to others. All right, good to see you, Tom. It's been a while and I'm glad uh, that uh, Mitrananda has made it uh, with the link that I shared. If you'd like to invite your friends, I learned that um, people who are not teachers on WizIQ for some reason uh, were not able to get into the class. So if you could share that link that I just added. Um, I see that I also added it on Facebook just now. So we've got Stella. Good to see you from Argentina. I'm recording this uh, so that I can add it to and YouTube, but without the uh, attendee list and without the uh, chat box, so that you can feel free to use the chat box and not feel that anyone is going to be watching you publicly, except of course on WizIQ. Okay, the um, is going to be uh, viewed on WizIQ after the class is over, as uh, all the recordings are for public and private classes. So it's really exciting to uh, be able to speak to you about attitudes. And I want to start off with um, not trying to persuade you of anything, because I don't think that's uh, my role. Uh, take what you can and what you can't put away. Uh, we're all different, and that's what this is about. It's about the fact that we are different. That um, I will be discussing. I'll be referring to three articles and to a book called The Emotional Life of Your Brain. It's the latest book by um, Richard Davidson, Jay Davidson, who has been working. He's a psychologist and a researcher and a meditator. And he's tried to combine uh, the three. He's been conducting research on uh, the effective style or emotional style. And he bases his work on the fact that the brain can change. He's got great examples and how uh, if we want to and we choose to, we can change our attitudes, but only if we want to, okay? Nothing uh, has to be done because somebody else says that it's a good thing, okay? It's up to um, us to decide what is good and what is not. All right, so uh, the slide must look familiar since I used it last time. These are some of the wikis that we mentioned. I don't know if, uh, if you were here for the previous class. If you could give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if you were here or if you viewed the recordings of uh, the first class on wikis for collaboration. Okay, that's recordings. That's, uh, that's wonderful. All right, so these are some of the wikis that we use. There are other wikis. These are not the exclusive ones. Uh, Wik Wikia, Wiki Educator, PB Works, Wikispaces, WebPaint, and Google Sites can be used as wikis. How many of you have tried one of these, or maybe two? If you could just write in the chat box which ones you tried. In other words, you created an account and uh, you saw what it's about. Because that's the idea. The idea is to find one or two that suits your needs and then use them for yourself. Thank you, Tom. Or with other teachers, your students, uh, your business. Okay, uh, wikis, they're also used for business like blogs. 
uh, especially uh, Wikimedia. A lot of companies use that. I uh, was not there yet. All right, so miss the class. <laughs> okay, so um, I know that uh, some of you ask questions, and that's really wonderful. In um, the course, Bl Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology in the course feed, and I encourage you to do that. Keep asking questions. And some questions were asked about Wikispaces. I create an account. What do I do? Well, I invited some people. I started discussions. Well, a wiki is like a website. It just allows you to work on a template. All these wikis have templates, which makes it easier. But it's like a website, except that others can join you and write edit with you. Okay, very good. Oh, Poonam, you're here. Great, because you're one of the people that asked about Wikispaces and how it can be used. So it's like a regular website. Thank you, Tom. That's the Google Doc that I'm going to be talking about. Thank you for sharing that, Tom. I also shared uh, a link to the article, one of the articles. I don't know if you got it or not. So let me share it again. I'll be talking about that. There it is. Okay, and... Um, says I up my video, so I'll keep opening and closing. Oh, all right. So uh, let's get started. All right. So why do we collaborate? Okay, this is one of the questions that I asked. I believe in the course feed. Why do we collaborate? And you may have other reasons. Feel free to add them in the chat box. Why do we collaborate? Okay. Um, and I think that's actually uh, a philosophical question uh, on many areas, okay? And you can think of where you collaborate. And the idea is, are we connected in some way or are we completely separate beings who do not want to have anything to do with anyone else because of competition? So this kind of goes um, against the idea of competing with one another, but working together in order to uh, succeed in projects or other things. Okay, feel free to ask questions as we go, whether they're related to this or something else that you are uh, concerned about. Exactly, Thomas. I totally agree with that. That's the reason why I collaborate. I find that collaborating really takes the load off. In other words, why take you know so much upon yourself when you can actually work with others and um, get higher quality, in many cases, teamwork, exactly. And the philosophy of teamwork you can't convince someone who's not a team player, but there are lots of benefits if, um, you know, if we're willing to let go <laughs> and uh, share. Less stress, it raises our confidence because sometimes we're not confident to start a project or to write a paper or write a book or do anything else by ourselves. Even bake a cake. We may want someone to join us, whatever it is. So it raises our confidence when we work with someone else. Yes, I agree that it's called, it could be culturally based too. Uh, it could give us better performance and it allows us to be creative because stress level goes down and we get ideas from one another. In other words, we... Um, we throw ping pong and brainstorm and, and we could go to places that we might not go to by ourselves. So it actually could raise our creativity and shared responsibility. We don't, again, this could lower stress. We are co-responsible and that gives us a, a wonderful sense of uh, ownership that we're together in this and the team spirit. Thank you, Stella. Is there a need for any kind of software to get responsible to edit? No software. It's just a website and it's a template, Punam. So there's no problem. So what does it take to collaborate? You mentioned, and you were ahead of me there. Thank you. Um, 
And Eva, as you mentioned, culture. So maybe we have to be in the right kind of culture or in a certain culture. Can you think of cultures that are very, very sharing? They like to do things together, family meals, going out together. I mean, this is a social, you know, working together is actually very, very social. Australians <laughs> do it well. Okay, that's good to hear. But Italians don't. I thought Italians would love to uh, collaborate. Latin Americans, yes, I think Latin Americans are uh, excellent at uh, collaborating, very open. Indians, oh, you mean from India, not uh, Native Americans. Spanish too. And France, okay. Hello, Michelle, good to see you. So the French also enjoy collab Brazilians, that's South America. All right, and Polish as well. All right, so have we left any culture out? So any cultures that you feel, even though I don't know what cultures are, <laughs> because I think that people are people, uh, regardless of where they come from. And if you think of Australia, they're, it's an immigrant country with lots of Italians, I'm sure. So maybe they feel more comfortable when they're out of their uh, original country. Uh, let's see, Colombia. Oh, you're from Colombia, thank you. Oh, you think the British have, uh, when you think of a British, a person from uh, the UK, you think of someone who, who's a loner and doesn't want to maybe collaborate. Exactly, I would tend to agree with that, that where you were brought up, so uh, if you were brought up, your parents encouraged you, and they were collaborators, they involved you in many things, you'll probably be that kind of person. And of course, Poonam, exactly. We are all different. And this is exactly why uh, Richard Davidson started his research, because he found out that the outliers or those in his research who were on the side were actually representative of everyone. We are all different. We are wired differently. All right, some of us are more social, some of us are more collaborative. You know, it's really, really an individual thing. This is just a reminder that in the PowerPoint presentation, which I'm going to share right now, you can click on the images to, um, let's see if I have it here somewhere. I thought I had it. Um, okay, so here is um, a link to the, uh, to the PowerPoint on Google Drive. Just as well we are wired. <laughs> That's right, it makes life more interesting. But as I said, uh, our brains are very, very plastic, and we can change anything. And I'd like to tell you a little story before we get to the Google Drive uh, from uh, the last class. Uh, there was a woman, and this is a story, a true story, who had a stroke. And she couldn't use uh, her uh, right arm, okay? Her right arm was completely paralyzed. She could only use her left, but her left wasn't much use since she wasn't used to using her left. In any case, they wanted to find out and help her, of course, whether her brain could change. In other words, whether the messages she was giving her brain would cause her brain to change. So what they did was, because her left arm was the only arm she could use, they... Uh, forced her not to use, in other words, they put it in a cast so she wouldn't be able to use it. And she only had her right arm, which was paralyzed, so she actually couldn't use any of her arms. And what they did was they did a bit of physiotherapy to get her right arm to be uh, in workable condition so that it was uh, strong enough to be able to go up and to be able to write and do all kinds of um, muscular things. But even though her brain, the right side of her brain, was completely paralyzed and she, her arm couldn't move. What they asked her to do was to imagine <laughs> that she was using her right arm through her imagination. And that's what they practice. They practice what's called mindfulness and uh, 
forcing her to use her thoughts. So she used her thoughts and um, she told her arm, write, you know, she, she tried to imagine that she was using her right arm for writing. She visualized all these things in her brain. In other words, she was telling her, she was lying to her brain. <laughs> she was telling her brain that her right arm was working. And what do you think happened? You probably know the rest of it. Yes, today she's using both arms. In other words, she can use her right arm, even though it's completely paralyzed. The brain managed to get her um, to use her right arm by taking her ability back from her left to her right. So the brain is, and there are many other cases where we can change our brain physiology. In other words, our thinking can change our brain. And there are a lot of cases, and you can think of lots of ideas. And if you're interested in audio, this book has audio. And this is where you can get it, The Emotional Life of Your Brain, and how you can, how to change the way you think, feel, and live so that you can be healthy and happy. So what happened last week in the Google Drive doc? Okay, even though we know the two heads are better than one, what was the problem? Why didn't people collaborate? Okay, what prevented us from collaborating and doing what may be very natural? It may be a very natural thing for us to work together. We know it's good. So why don't we do it? Okay, that's the question. Why don't we do what we know is a better way? Okay, what's keeping us? And I know you mentioned culture, and we know it's attitude. So can we change these attitudes? Competition, very good, Poonam. That's right. Okay, and competition brings a lot of stress. And stress, as you know, brings disease. And disease, as you know, is not very good to live with. It's very hard. So, exactly. How do we get students to collaborate and work in a team when we can't do it? In other words, we have problems too. And I believe Thomas has added <laughs> the link to the Google Doc. Okay, there's the Google Doc. And you'll notice that's not the Google Doc. I believe I gave you the wrong one. Uh, Thomas, you've got the right one, right? That uh, there, the one that Thomas added. Let me get to it. Thomas, there we go. All right, that's the one. Okay. And uh, you were to ask questions. Okay, ask a question and maybe, so I believe um, someone asked, can you post a graph here? And Thomas explained, gave a response. And then you were supposed to uh, write down the, uh, the name of the wiki, the link to the wiki that you created, and the description, and how you use it. Okay, and I see that there are a lot of people there right now. It might be you. I'm not sure. Okay, so there, there's the link again. Take a look at it, okay? Now, what, it started out quite well, okay, um, if you notice. People were there at the beginning, and then it stopped. Okay, it stopped. Because, um, well, I don't know why it stopped. You can say I didn't have time. I forgot about it. Lots of excuses for not working on this, okay, this collaborative document. Okay, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to force yourself, um, even if you don't feel like it, force yourself to fill it in. Write a question. Don't answer it but maybe answer somebody else's question. Write a question. I know that many of you had questions that you asked on the course feed in uh, Learn to Blend and Flip. 
But why don't you write a any question that pertains to Google Drive and wikis? Okay, wikis. You must have questions and see what it's like. What is it like to um, to do this? What happens to you as you do this? Okay, what happens to you? as you do what you're told or what someone asks you to do, okay? And think of your students as well as you do this. And then maybe you can come up with some ideas on how to get your students to collaborate. But I think the first step for us as teachers is to do it ourselves. It's very hard to ask someone to do something if we don't do it, okay? So remember, whatever you do, there'll be a change, okay? You'll notice a change in yourself. Once you go through the change, that attitude will be reflected in what you tell your students. Your instructions, the way you uh, face your students, will be completely different and that's important okay it's really important for us to model what we would like our students to do before we ask them to do it okay and that's something that um, I always find interesting when uh, we have teachers meetings and the teachers are all talking nobody's listening to anybody and then you think well wait a minute if you can't be quiet in a meeting how do you expect your students to be quiet during your classes Okay, so it's really important for us to put ourselves in our students' shoes and try to do what we want them to do before we ask them to do it. All right, just as an exercise. So let's uh, come back to that later, and you can uh, grapple with your, uh, with your way of doing things that you don't want to do. Uh, effective neuroscience. Effective neuroscience it has been becoming really, really popular. Um, more than we realize, a lot of uh, research is going on, really, really uh, effective research, with an E, effective re research on effective neuroscience, and they're really proving it in incredible ways that we can change our brain by telling us ourselves. For example, if you're not happy and you tell yourself, not only tell yourself, but you smile, something happens to your brain. But if you go around with, you know, with a sour face, that also influences your brain. So whatever you tell your brain, your brain is going to follow. And everybody around you is going to be influenced by this. It's a ripple effect. So it's not something that, you know, we kind of pass on from generation to generation, but this has been proven, scientifically proven. And it's just amazing that we are so very flexible. In other words, we can change so much in what we don't like about ourselves, by ourselves. So the emotional life of your brain is about how to change the way you think and live so that you can live a better life. And I've heard a lot of students ask me, I mean, tell me, you know, high school kids that, but even older ones, that, you know, they're having problems, they can't, it's not that they, their stories are any different from somebody else's stories, but they can't cope. And they ask me, how do I cope? What do I do? I get frustrated, I get, you know, I can't take my thinking because it's driving me crazy. So they literally tell me, I'm driving myself crazy and I don't know what to do about it. And I tell them, it's very easy. All you need to do is listen, don't judge, and try to be in the present. And that's the key. The key is really present. Stop thinking about your past, stop thinking about your future, and focus on now. And then they figure out, well, I am focusing on my present. I'm thinking about my school in the present. I'm thinking about my husband, my wife, my children in the present. I said, that's not it. The present is now. And then they ask me, well, what is now? Now is 
now you're sitting so let me ask you this if you could focus on now what is now for you what is now excellent now is the chat box that's class exactly Maria no it doesn't mean multitasking now means you sitting on your chair or maybe you're sitting on the floor or maybe you're sitting on the bed so describe your now where are you where are you right now are you on the floor are you on the chair as I said sitting at the kitchen table are you eating are you drinking are you, where are you okay Stella sitting in front of my PC in my studio on an armchair exactly so this is your now and you're listening to Nelly or you're watching Nelly you're looking at a screen that's your now so your now is the frame okay it's the frame that you're looking at plus your butt on the chair the weight of your butt if it's on the chair that's probably all you feel maybe you feel the floor so Tom is looking at the questions and you're writing in the chat box how can you do both Tom see uh, you know it's when we teach the if you're an English teacher English is a foreign language teacher and you teach the present tense and and you present progressive or continuous whatever you want to call it and and you say now is now so what is now um, back and forth quickly so you so you're missing a lot of now there are a lot of nows on your timeline Tom right a lot of nows but the now is only the second that wherever you happen to be freeze okay the now is when you freeze that's now Helena <laughs> okay so freeze okay freeze freezing is really really important freeze in the spot look around that's now okay now that's right that's now okay freeze on the spot yes that's how I teach the present progressive or continuous right um, a type of list of two different things you did for more now <laughs> yes but okay lots of nows so that's now in order to change our attitudes to collaboration or to anything we have to expect accept the fact that all we have is now that's all you have and that everybody's now is different we're in different places our nows are different and the minute we're able to accept that fact that everybody has their own present so to think okay everybody's present is different and when you think about that you become more aware that collaborating means that everybody brings their present moment okay which is completely different so first of all you need to accept the fact that we're all different that's right that's right very true Mitch Hernandez so the research that uh, Richard Davidson did proves that our resilience is different because we have our past and we think about our future the way we come out of difficult situations and our resilience is completely different our outlook and how we view other people is completely different the way we size up and evaluate other people is different you may think that I'm oh she looks really happy today well she might not be happy in other words we don't know 
we might not be reading social cues in the same way. You might think that someone's angry when they're not. And then you might act upon their anger because you don't know, but you think they're angry. So self-awareness is really important because that's the only way we can learn about and realize that everybody's different. Our sensitivity to context. We take things in different ways. And we pay attention in different ways. Tom has a way of paying attention by doing a lot of things. I pay attention by stopping. Some people pay attention by running. Some pay attention by dancing. And imagine our students, how do they pay attention? What do they need to do? All right, so let me ask you this. How do you pay attention? Okay, how do you pay attention? Very good, Tom. That's right, because it's debilitating, and some people tend to find it easier to suffer than not to suffer because they're so used to it. It's just the question of being used to Tom. All these things can be changed. We can learn to focus on the present and be happier. So by immersing totally in what is to be done now, not done, but what is being now, that's right. Uh, you have to meditate to pay attention, okay. So what do you meditate on? Do you close your eyes? Do you keep your eyes open? Do you focus on something? Like, for example, focus on the coffee. There it is. Okay, will that help you focus? Or focus on a color. Let's focus. Okay, this is what I ask my students, by the way, to do before exams. You know, they get very nervous, so I ask them to focus on a specific thing with their eyes open. And every time they start thinking about their stress and fears and so on, to come back to whatever it is they're focusing on. So nothingness, <laughs> okay. So there are different kinds of attention focus. Meditating with your eyes closed and then nothingness. There's mindful, which means that we focus on our body or we focus on the breath or we focus, but you do focus on something, okay? Oh, hello, Jerry, good to see you. Uh, listen and not hear. Watch and not see. That sounds brilliant, Poonam. Thank you for sharing that. You focus on the topic. All right. So focusing on a topic is very difficult because it's not visual. It's not something that you can see. Uh, Helena. So when we focus on a, on a topic, it's very, very fluid. It's very difficult. Uh, when I'm cooking for dinner event, I need to focus on the times for cooking. So you look at the clock as you work. <laughs> focus on the now. Food overcooks or burns. <laughs> okay. Right. So you foc you, you're actually there with the cooking. Okay. So you are cooking. The cooking is you and you are the cooking on the clock. <laughs> So I hope you don't focus too much on the clock because you, things may burn while you're looking at the clock. All right. So um, it's really important to uh, realize that we are very, very complex and, um, and learn about ourselves. All right. Uh, one of the problems, according to Gadjil and Nokus Malach, is that there is something called inhibition. Inhibition to collaboration. Now, what is this inhibition? Any thoughts? Inhibition. Some of us, some people are inhibited. Kitchen timers everywhere on the food inside the, uh, the cookery. <laughs> Inhibitions, even though they understand that collaboration is very constructive. So as I said before, we know the two heads are better than one and yet we may be inhibited or our students may be inhibited to um, to collaborate exactly fear of judgment and that's where the past comes in thank you because the past are our, our experiences negative 
okay, negative or positive or whatever they happen to be. And the future, okay, is uh, the result of the past. In other words, whatever we experience in the past, and it doesn't have to be judging from different areas, in the future we think, well, the future is going to be negative too. Because the past was negative, the future is going to be negative, so I'm not going to do it in the present. And of course the idea is to put away your past and not think about your future and only focus on the collaboration. And this is exactly what they did in a study. Okay, what they try to do in this study, and I hope you can see it because it's kind of small, uh, what they try to do in this study called, uh, it's from Applied Cognitive Psychology, um, Overcoming Collaborative Inhibition Through Error Correction. And this was a classroom experiment. Now, error correction means that people work together. They collaborated to find mistakes in the writing. Okay, in the actual writing. And what they found was, and you can read the article, you'll be able to find it online. What they found was that when they worked on a collaborative project, collaborative writing project, it was much easier for them to find mistakes together than if somebody corrected their work. There's fear in someone correcting our work and as teachers you know that um, when students, when you correct your students work they are scared. They're afraid that um, you're going to find mistakes and then maybe sometimes they make so many mistakes that you're amazed. You know, why do they make so many mistakes? if they know, if they don't like you finding their mistakes. Well, sometimes they just give up. So the, the result of this experiment provided encouraging evidence that it's possible to eliminate collaborative inhibition in classroom settings. They found out that through collaborative evaluation of a text, students were able to work together and not have any fears. Exactly. That's right. That's why it's possible to change all that by providing a lot of encouragement and allowing students, um, Mitrovanda, allowing students to forget the past, forget the future, and focus on <laughs> the task at hand and not worry about other things. In another experiment and um, research study that was done um, by Inna Blau and Avner Caspi, Department of Educational Psychology at Open University, they learned that exactly what you know, and you won't be surprised. They wanted to find out the influence of psychological ownership, and I think, Helena, you mentioned that, and responsibility. What happens to students or anyone who works on a collaborative Google Drive? And this was a Google Drive document. Uh, what happens? How do they feel about ownership? Do they feel that they own the document? That they write together? And do they feel responsible for the mistakes they make or for the good things that happens? And what about their attitude to the quality of the outcome. Okay, what happens to them? And they found out, and I think I shared the link before, you can read it yourself. They found out that there was a problem when it came to editing. Allowing people to edit your work posed a problem. Everybody likes to collaborate. That's not a problem. The problem begins when someone edits your work. And it's yours or you made an editing and somebody deletes it or changes it. And I told you, that's what I also experienced with Wiki Educator. What happens if I have a page and you come and you make changes on the page, even though I said you could, but how do I feel? So they found out that 
everything was fine. People enjoyed working together as long as no one edited their work. The minute someone edited their work, they felt threatened and they felt less ownership and they were disappointed with the quality of the document. Well, not necessarily. Okay, so when you're right, Thomas. So what? When did things work out really well? They worked out when they suggested an improvement. Instead of just editing, it was suggested that they make suggestions. In other words, don't touch my writing, don't delete anything. Simply make suggestions. Okay, so I suggest you. Uh, or comments. Okay, you can do this on a Google Drive. You can also add comments or make suggestions, but don't change anything. In other words, working together on a document, but making suggestions. Once they made a suggestion, they felt psychological ownership and responsibility for the document. So that's something to think of when you think of your students. Ask them to make suggestions on the side, but not to edit anybody's work. And this way, the collaboration will be more constructive, and maybe people inhibited because they'll know that everybody agrees to make the suggestions. So that's what should be done. Make suggestions, uh, Poonam. Don't um, edit anybody's work, just uh, make suggestions and let them decide if they want to accept the suggestions or not. Is it clear? Are there any questions at this? Ah, Jerry asks, why do they edit other people's work? Because it's a collaborative um, document. There are two kinds of things, Jerry. You can have a. Um, no, I think Jerry's because Jerry maybe came in late. We're talking about, say, a Google Drive document. Sometimes students peer review, or they uh, try to uh, read each other's work and then add comments or edit, or they can work on a document together from scratch. Exactly, Jerry. That's the idea. The idea that it turned out that most of us prefer suggestions. We don't want other people to touch our work, okay, or change our words for us. We prefer to do it ourselves, or at least to decide whether we want it or not. Yes, they do. They edit each other's work. When it comes to collaboration, yes. That's the idea. All right, the two works again that I used um, here. One was Davidson's The Emotional Life of Your Brain, and I showed you this. By the way, you, there's a video recording, uh, a free video recording on the experiments that um, Richard did that you can find on YouTube if you Google it. And the other one was uh, Gadgil and Nukes. Overcoming Collaborative Innovation Through Correction, a classroom experiment. All right, now for questions. I think we've got about um, 15 minutes for questions. Are there any questions before we go back to the Google Drive? Okay. Yes, Thomas, that's a great idea too. There are lots of ways of collaborating. Uh, it depends on what you teach. Um, Jerry, I'm not sure if you teach or what you teach, but it doesn't have to be teaching. It could be a collaborative book. I mean, I've written articles um, on Google Drive. I've written books, book chapters, books, and I've organized uh, courses and PowerPoint presentations with other people, and I found it very, very rewarding. But I find that uh, people are afraid to touch 
other people's words? Who finally approves? Ah, that's a good question. Well, the person who wrote it. If I write, if I make a typo and I like it that way, <laughs> um, it's it's the group. It's a it could be a group decision too. Oh, you found it. Is that uh, Richard Davidson? All right, see if you can find Richard Davidson before we go to the uh, wiki. But I, I don't know if that's well, there's one with the Dalai Lama. Uh, let's see if this is the one that there are a few of them actually. Ah, that's it. The emotional life of your brain. Yeah, uh, this is 2012. Yes. Um, that's that's a very good one. Yes, but if you notice on the right, there are lots of uh, YouTube videos. Uh, there's this one that um, Richard did for Google in 2009. You know, Google has all these incredible, I think they're incredible, incredible, um, I, I think they stopped it though, but they have them online, these incredible YouTube videos that they do long ones. Okay, there's one by Richard from 2009. Richard has been actually doing this. I think he, he went to Harvard. He started in, um, I think, he started university when he was about 15 years old. Uh, at least he did an experiment. He started experimenting on sleep and things in person. Um, but he, he didn't give up. He was convinced of, from a very young suffer. age he, uh, that, uh, that we can do more than we realize, that we have the power to uh, make a difference to how we live and how we think and what we do and what happens to us. And he's not the only one. There are a lot of people out there. Some of them have proven it. Some of them just go by intuition that um, how we think changes uh, our reality, changes our circumstances, changes what happens to us. And the idea is if we can uh, have an influence on what happens to us, then we want good things to happen to us. And, um, and now it's been proven. So, uh, so there's a question, can we have any way of not allowing to change the text? Oh yes, definitely, Jerry. Of course you can. Uh, if you're, um, I don't know what wiki you're thinking of, but if you're the, um, the owner of the text, uh, then you have the final word, of course. I'm not sure what Poonin asked here. Uh, let me see if I can get that. Is there any method of which we do not allow the, of course, yes, there is. Um, if you're the owner, you can decide uh, whether you want them to edit or not. You can just have them comment. If we're talking about a Google Drive, you can just have them comment and take away their rights to edit. If I'm the owner, it's me who's approving. Exactly. But not only that, are we talking about Google Drive? Are we talking about wikis? Uh, if so, what wikis are we talking about? But in most cases, yes. The owner has the final say, and the owner is the one that decides whom to give um, full rights to. So it's never a problem. Okay, let's, uh, let's go back to the uh, Google Drive, okay, that we um, started last time and see if we can ask the questions here, just for the sake of uh, working. There we go. Okay, so let's go there now. We've got 10 minutes and ask the questions there. Okay, so let's... Um, Here we are. Okay, and I notice here that um, maybe I should be, let me um, screen share. Okay, I'm gonna be frozen for a second, so don't be alarmed.
Okay, now I can screen share. All right, so let's... Uh, okay, here's the document. You can add comments on the side if you don't, if you want to change somebody's words. What do we do when other students edit someone else's work <clears throat> uh, in a wrong way, just out of envy? Do you mean, okay, let's say I'm not sure what he means by envy here. So I'm going to go to comments at the top and add a comment based on that. So my question is, what do you mean by envy? Okay, I don't want to change that word. Let's say I think it's the wrong word. Let's say I think uh, out of jealousy. I think the person may have used the wrong word. So instead of changing the word to what I think is right, which is what teachers do, we change our students' words for them, you know? And, and we don't think that, you know, maybe they don't feel comfortable that we're changing things for them. So maybe, you know, a Google Drive document would be nice so that we can add comments, make suggestions maybe, and let them decide what would work best for them. Okay, uh, I can also mark up in a wiki, they should add their work but not delete someone else's contribution. They should make suggestions and comments, revise the finished document as a group. Okay, um, Okay, we're getting some ideas. How about students who have difficulty with... That's a good point, whoever asked that. Okay, let me add that. That's, um, that's an excellent point. Um, we can encourage them, them to try to understand how they feel. Okay, so I would say um, maybe share those feelings with one with uh, with the teacher or um, blog about it privately. Okay, they can also as long as they're thinking about things. We don't have to see uh, what they add. Okay, we don't have to see if they're if they don't have uh, the social skills needed, and you do have to have uh, certain social levels of social skills um, to be able to want to share anything. So I think maybe um, asking them to think about things and reflect by themselves. Maybe keep a diary if they don't want to blog privately. Uh, maybe keep a diary or a journal of how they feel so that they can become aware. The better you become aware of what's happening to you as a collaborator, it may uh, help you become more open to socializing. Okay, I see that, the, ah, very good. You used Vikidia. That's nice. And it's French, I see. Thank you for sharing it in English. That's excellent. By children for children. Wow, that's wonderful. Ah, uh, from the word kid. There's kid there in the middle. Uh, lovely. Thank you, Michelle. That's, that's wonderful. I know there is a wiki for kids. I think there's another one also. I'm not sure what it's called. That's lovely. Okay, that's also Wikimedia. I can see that it's Wikimedia uh, because of the um, bottom right. It says uh, Media Wiki. Wikimedia uh, Media Wiki, they're about the same. Okay, let's see what else um, you have there. Okay, so keep adding as you uh, create your Wikis. Nobody will know who you are, by the way, because this is public, so your name will not appear. So again, no one will know who's writing what. Okay, this has a value too, and it's a question whether you want to make things public for your students or not. Sometimes making it anonymous helps uh, the ones who are shy, maybe. 
sometimes get offended if you just go ahead and change. Exactly, and, and we forget that, uh, Nevis. We forget that, and that's why I think it's important for teachers to be students, to take courses like this online course, Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology. I think it's important so that we get a sense of what it feels like. You know, everybody's different, as I said, and we have to respect everybody's uniqueness, which is <laughs> different from how we are, and um, and learn about ourselves so that, you know, we can um, accept our students on an individual basis because our students are not just, you know, an audience in front of us. They're definitely uh, unique. Each one of them is different. Yes. So, so Nia, I think that using a Google Drive or some kind of wiki is a great way to uh, help students improve their writing. And you might be interested in the um, in the article on Google Drive. That's right. Very good, Mitterrandanda. It's not. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Jenny. I hope. I think you learned from yourself. I think that's what it's about. It's really about learning about ourselves as learners that's important. And again, it's the process. I keep saying this, but it's the process. It's not information. You're getting information. But this information is going to look different as we evolve and advance and change. And we are changing. You have to realize that we are changing whether we like it or not. No ma Every time we do something different, uh, our brains accept that as different. And there are lots of examples. That's why I highly recommend the book, and I'm not getting anything for it. I just think it's a great book. That's right, we are. And our brains change as a result of whatever we do on a daily basis. Okay, so feel free to continue uh, adding uh, questions and getting your uh, your wiki accounts and trying out different kinds of wikis and then seeing how uh, they differ and choose one for yourself, your business, your students, uh, your family. You can have a family wiki, by the way, you know, for your extended family, for your uh, for your family. So wiki, wiki tree, <laughs> right. So thank you, thank you everybody, and uh, we'll see you um, this month. As I said, is wiki. It's a wiki month. Next month is going to be a Google Drive month. Google everything about Google Drive and some Google apps. Yes, that's right. Wiki is for family trees. But even for your small family, you know, your children, instead of having a Facebook, you know, why not have a wiki for the family? And then you can add photos, and it could be private, unless you want to share it. And it'll stay forever. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's been wonderful. And I'll see you on the weekend. Bye-bye.